Welcome to part 3 of the Atomic Audio Visuals in Unity tutorial by Peerplay. In the previous part we created the subtractor gizmos, so we can easily view the system we are creating. In this part we will spawn the attractor and atoms in the start function. So let's start creating that into our script. Now before we are going to work on our start function, we will first change a few variables in the evaluation step that we worked on in the previous part. Because I made a little mistake, in the evaluation step we're now dividing one by the length of the attract points. But what if we have more than eight track points? We actually just want to use the colors uh, between zero and seven. Because we've got eight different bands in our audio peer class. So this number should just always be 0 0.125, which is uh, one divided by eight. Now in the color gradient evaluation, we're not going to say it's multiplied by i but we're going to multiply this by the attract points integer that we are filling in here and this will always be between 0 and 7 but to make sure that it's always between 0 and 7 we can do a mathf function mathf.clamp and we can clamp this value between 0 and 7 and now that we've done that let's save this and check out the differences in the result so with this result, if we change element 2 to, for example, 5, then it just changes to the correct position. And if we make it like 10, it will still be uh, 7. So it will be the same as 7. So we can't really go wrong here. And now we can uh, specify per attractor on which band they should run and which color the balls that we're going to instantiate should have. Now we are going to instantiate our attractors and our atoms and we need to store them into an array to keep track of them. So let's create an array of game objects and we'll call this the attractor array and atom array. Now the next thing we need to know is how many of these atoms we want to instantiate per attractor. So we need some kind of a value for that and we'll create an uh, integer to keep track of the amount of atoms we want to instantiate per attractor. And let's also give it a range between 1 and 64. Now that we know the amount of atoms we want to instantiate and the amount of attract points we have, we can set the length of our arrays. And we'll do that inside the start function. Let's first talk to the attractor array. We'll make it a new game object uh, with the length of the attract points at length. Now for the atom array, it will be the length of the attract point, so it's length times the amount of atoms per point. And as we're talking to every atom individually, we want to set its scale, its magnitude, its strength of attraction, and we will make variables for that. So we might want to set a random scale, and so we're going to create a public vector 2 which will store a min and a max value. So the dot x value will be the minimum and the dot y value will be the maximum value of the scale. So if you would make the both values the same amount, they will all be the same scale. Now as we will pick a random scale for all of the atoms in the array, we need to store also the scale that we've set into a its own array set. So we'll make a float array which will store the scale and we'll call this the atom scale set. Now over in the start function we will say that the atom scale set is the length of the attract points times the amount of atoms per point. Now in part 1 we created the attract2 script which has the strength of attraction and the max magnitude which are applied to every atom and we want to talk to that script. We need to have the variables that we want to apply to that script for the strength of attraction and the max magnitude. So let's create a public float and we'll call this the strength of attraction and let's create also a max magnitude. Now we want to instantiate all of these atoms somewhere around the attractor and we need to know at what distance we want to have that so we'll create here also a random position distance. And these values will all make sense when we will write the start function out. And the last thing that we're going to need for this part is a public boolean, which will say if we want to use the gravity or not. So 
let's say a public boolean and we'll call this use gravity. We will now start instantiating our attract points and our atoms in the start function. And we will start with a for loop. And the length of the for loop will be the amount of attract points that we've set. So let's first instantiate our attractor. So let's say a new game object and we'll call this the attractor instance. It's going to be casted to a game object instantiate and the prefab we want to instantiate is the attractor. Now let's first add this instance of the attractor into the array that we've created. So we'll say that the attractor array is the attractor instance. Now we're going to set the position of each of the attract points in the loop and we can use the vector that we've got here inside the ondra gizmos we can copy this into the clipboard and we'll talk to the attractor instance well, it's transform dot its position is this position now we're going to make this attractor instance a parent of the game object that it runs on so let's say the attractor instance dot its transform dot its parent is going to be this dot transform now the last thing we need to do is set the scale of each of these attractors. So we'll talk again to the attractor instance and we'll say that its transform dot its local scale is going to be a new vector 3 and it's going to be the scale of the scale attract points that we've set for its x, y and z. And now inside this for loop we will start another for loop for instantiating all of the atoms per attract points. So let's create another for loop. And the length of this for loop will be the amount of atoms per point that we've set. And here we can repeat the process which we've done with instantiating the attractor instance, but now we're going to make an atom instance and instantiate the atom prefab. Now we need to place our atom inside the atom array. So we've got the atom array here, but we need to know which position it should be and we need to keep track of which count of the atom we're talking to. So outside of the for loop, uh, at the top, we're going to create an integer and we'll call this count atom. Now this integer will keep track of which atom we're talking to. And every time at the end of the for loop in the amount of atoms per point, we want to increase this count so we know which one we need to talk to. So we'll say count atom plus plus, and it will add one to the count of the atom. So we can use this value inside here so we know which position it is and we'll say that this is the atom instance. Now if we look into the attract2 script we can see here that there is a public transform attracted2 and we need to set this attracted2 to the corresponding attractor. So let's access that attract2 and set it to the correct attractor. The atom instance dot get component attract to and we want to talk to the attracted to and we're going to talk to the attractor array and we need to have the position of i in the for loop uh, it's transform so now it's reference to the correct attractor now let's also set the strength of attraction and the max magnitude so we'll say that get components the strength of attraction will be the strength of attraction from this script. And also the max magnitude will be the max magnitude inside this script that we will set. Now we've created also a boolean to set whether to use gravity or not. So we can say that if use gravity, if it's true, then we're going to get the component rigid body on the atom and we'll set the use gravity on the rigid body to true. If it's false, then the rigid body use gravity will be false. Now to instantiate the atoms, we need to give a position of where we want to instantiate the atoms. And what I'd like to do is instantiate the atoms uh, reference to the position of the attractor and give it a value of a random post distance which we've created in the setup already. So let's talk to the atom instance and we'll say that it's transformed on its position 
is a new factor tree and we're going to get the attractor that this atom is spawned upon it's transform dot its position dot its x plus uh, a random dot range and what we're going to use is the random position distance and we can use this by the minimum value will be the minus of this random post distance and the maximum will be the plus value of this random post distance that way we only have to use one value and we can do the same for the y and the c so let's copy paste this we can close it there and let's change this to its y position and to its z position now the last thing we need to do is to create the scale of all these atoms and we've created a vector 2 of a minimum and maximum of scale value so we need to apply this scale value for each and every one of these atoms and store them in a list and then apply them to the atoms so let's do that and start off with a float which is a private float for now and we'll call this the random scale to be random dot range between the atom scale dot x and the atom scale dot its y now we're going to apply this random scale to the atom scale array and again we're going to get the count of the atom and we'll say that it is the random scale and now we need to apply this scale to the actual transform dot local scale of the atom and we're going to apply the values that we've just set to the atom skill set into the local scale of the atom and as we're instantiating a lot of atoms we don't want to clutter our scene so let's make it a parent of the parent object that we've set uh, which is called the preset so let's say that the atom instance dot its transform dot its parent is the transform dot parent dot transform and now let's uh, save the script and go back to unity so if we take a look in the inspector we can see some more values there we've got the amount of atoms per point which I've set to 64 for now and the atom scale min max I've set it to between 1 and 6 so there will be really small balls and really big ones uh, the strength of attraction for all the balls we can set and the max magnitude uh, we've got a random post distance and I've ticked off the use gravity so it won't use any gravity when I play it instantiates 8 times 64 uh, atoms around 8 different attractors um, so what we can do we can select an attractor and if I move this one and you can see that all the atoms of that are going to only follow that attractor to show you the uh, gravity if I make this value a bit smaller 0 0.4 between 1 and let's use gravity now you can see that all these balls are following down because the gravity in unity is set to minus 9.81 if you move this around it will keep moving around with using of the gravity so in the next part we will actually start to apply the materials to the atoms and run it on audio and make it an audio visualization uh, and start scripting inside the update but for now i want to thank you for following this tutorial if you liked it then please give a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel or check out my patreon for uh, source code and see you next time